27 dealt with the faithful and discreet slave. This question also deals with the faithful and discreet slave. While the last question I asked dealt with who are the faithful and discreet slave throughout history, this one deals with the qualifications of the faithful and discreet slave. As mentioned in the previous question, the Jehovah's Witnesses believe they are the faithful and discreet slave because they continue the work of the first century Christians in Paul's day. However, that's not the only reason. Jehovah's Witnesses actually came out with the qualifications of the faithful and discreet slave and the reasons why Jehovah's Witnesses are the faithful and discreet slave. So these qualifications aren't my own, they're coming straight from the Watchtower of March 15, 1990. Firstly, they would have to be neutral. Basically, that means not involved in any nationalistic campaigns or otherwise. Secondly, they would have to understand the presence of Christ. Basically, that means they would have to understand that Christ returned invisibly to the throne in 1914. Thirdly, they would have to be free from spiritism. Read here that they would need to have no involvement with anything occult-like in nature. All of these requirements were needed by 1919. Now, as I mentioned before in previous questions, Jesus returned to the throne in heaven invisibly in 1914. It was here that he chose his religion, and they prepared themselves to represent him by 1919. So they had to meet the previous requirements in order to be considered as the faithful and discreet slave. But let's take a look at these requirements. Firstly, neutrality. In 1919, the International Bible Students, as they were known then, were actively buying war bonds from the U.S. during World War I. They were buying stock in the U.S. to help with the war effort. To me, that hardly seems neutral. Second requirement was to understand the presence of Christ. There's a problem with that as well. In 1919, Jehovah's Witnesses believed that Christ had actually returned in 1874. This was taken from the measurements found at the Pyramid of Giza. New light has shown that Christ actually returned in 1914 and not 1874 according to current Jehovah's Witness belief. So the Jehovah's Witnesses did not understand Christ's presence in 1919. The final requirement is they needed to be free from spiritism. There's even a problem with that. Pyramidology is a form of occultism according to current Jehovah's Witness belief, which was actually the way Charles Days Russell came up with the date 1874 as the return of Christ. Not only that, but they were also actively republishing a book called Angels and Women, in which the author of that book states she was in a trance while writing this book, and it was told to her by evil spirits. These are her exact words. The book is now considered a demonic book by Jehovah's Witnesses. So in all three cases, Jehovah's Witnesses fail their own requirements to be considered as the faithful and discreet slave. So, tough question number 37 is, how are the Jehovah's Witnesses the faithful and discreet slave when they don't fulfill the requirements of the faithful and discreet slave from their own publication, The Watchtower? Yes, sir!